Whenever the annual Christmas Steam sales return to shower the world with ridiculously underpriced games, alongside buying a few $5 to $20 games that I've been eyeing off since the dawn of the year or so, I always make sure to buy a few obscure indie games around the $0.50 cents to $2 range for two main reasons. First is to give those developers whose game barely got to see the light of day before being buried under 16 revealing or ridiculous DLC skins for some obscure game that some people care about. And a shot at actually being played. And the second is the chance that I might one day find a hidden gem. A game that's just so incredible and fun, maybe a bit unpolished, but exactly the type of game I never knew I needed. And on January 4th of 2018, I purchased a little game called Defunct for $0.99. And I'm pleased to announce that my search for my perfect little indie game still continues because Defunct was not that game. Okay, that might have been a little bit harsh, but let me explain. Defunct is a 3D speed-based platformer-ish. You don't really do much actual platforming and it's honestly closer to a racing game, but without people to race against for the most part. The aim of the game besides getting to the end of the level is to just go really, really fast. Solely because it's fun and for no other reason. It's not actually a very challenging game if you take it slowly and carefully, making your way to the other side of the level, but fuck that, we want to go fast. The game has things such as pickups that give you a boost of speed, a fuel system and grind rails, all with the focus on making you go fast. And all of this probably sounds familiar to you if you've ever run down a really steep hill before. But I'm sure any of you who have played Defunct before are well aware that I've neglected to talk about a very specific detail, which is the main mechanic of the game, and the reason why someone would even play this game over anything else, which is the gravity altering mechanic. You see, in this game, by clicking the mouse, or doing whatever the hell it is you do on a controller, you can draw yourself towards the ground, effectively increasing gravity, which you can use on downhills to increase your speed much higher than normally possible. This is the main mechanic of the game, but the game has so much other content that could easily fill up a 5 to 10 hour game, it feels incredibly underdeveloped in the game's mere 1 hour time span. And that's just for the side mechanics. The main mechanic of this game has so much potential depth and interesting level design possibilities that by the time you finish the game you feel like you've barely scratched the surface, and half of your playtime wasn't even exploring the main mechanic anyway. This is the main issue I have with this game. When the levels actually act like functional levels, the game can be incredible and is honestly some of the most enjoyable speed-based gameplay experiences I've had. But that's about 10% of the game, the rest of it is doing god fucking knows what. Most of the game can be spent doing anything from getting out of ditches, climbing hills, getting lost, dealing with barely functional mechanics, traversing boring levels, or dealing with the game's countless glitches, which are so varied and unique that if I'm being honest, it's a little impressive. Also, occasionally the levels are pretty much flat, meaning you literally can't use the game's main mechanic, or they are this directionless open world collection where you can't even go far since you're probably zip, zip zoom right past where you're supposed to be. Also, it's very clear the game was pretty much only tested by the game developers themselves, since it's incredibly easy to have no fucking clue where to go or what to do, even in some pretty linear levels. Also, despite that and this piece of shit, the mechanics themselves are actually quite nicely designed. There are a lot of really small things that make the experience of going fucking fast as seamless and accessible as possible. Take, for example, what happens when you hit an obstacle like a tree or a small rock. In other games such as Terraria, doing something wrong is usually a pretty big momentum killer. And sure, the player did something wrong, but there are better ways to handle it in something like Defunct, which it does well by instead making you lose control and spin around like a child in an office chair. But not directly losing speed, which feels a heck of a lot better than just outrightly stopping. Mario does the same thing, assuming you're on a small boy when you get hit, momentarily pausing to let you know that you got hit, but then letting you continue like it never happened afterwards, as opposed to some other speed-based game. Other small quality of life features include the little light on your back which indicates whether you'll gain or lose speed by using your gravity at the current moment, and the little guide that shows your current trajectory while in the air. As for the visuals, they are... fine? A game like Defunct is in a really rough spot when it comes to creating assets and environments for its world. On one hand, the game generally looks pretty lazy and uninspired when you stop to look around. 
but in their defense, playing through the game as intended will let me view this area for about 1.25 seconds before I fly past it like I have a prom date in 20 minutes with my big hunky dude to do. So the artists behind Defunct had to somehow make each part of the game not look like shit while being aware it's going to be looked at for a grand total of basically fuck all and not lose their sanity. And it's not like they couldn't make the game beautiful if they tried, heck look at the title screen. If the entire game looked like that, I'd probably spend most of it moving like a snail to take in the goddamn scenery. The visuals are like cinema popcorn. It tastes okay-ish and it does its job of being something to occupy your hands and mouth while you enjoy the main event, but it's never something you'd really go back for and it's relatively cheap and consumable and there's a lot of it. But despite all of this, even as I'm writing the script where I've done little in the past few minutes but tear this thing apart, I still want to fucking play it. Like it's got some sadistic hook wedged into my heart pulling me back. Because when it works, by fucking god does it work. There are so many different ways to approach moving through even a simple area such as deciding whether you want to seek out boosts, focus on lumpy terrain to get a constant speed boost, use your velocity to seek out heights and accelerate down, gather fuel to use when you make a mistake to regain your speed, slide back and forth like you're travelling on a half pipe and the list goes on and on and on. With some better level design and less clutter with its mechanics, I think this game could be that hidden gem I mentioned earlier. And by all means, if this game looks like your thing, please go get it. But for me, it just felt a little bit short of the title Hidden Gem.